Hi guys and welcome, Glenmon here. So, recently TangoTech from the Hermitcraft server have issued the challenge to the other members to prepare a contraption that would kill them in an interesting way. Obviously no one else outside of Hermitcraft got interested in it and obviously I didn't get an idea how to do it as well. Just kidding. Obviously I got an idea how to kill Tango and it's using some of the most common 113 related issues that I have heard people are complaining about, using code AI and invisible creepers. However, since my plot has been followed a little bit due to the release of 113.2 that fixes some of the code spawning issues, I thought I'll just share it because it's an interesting one. So this is the whole setup. We have here a bunch of creepers behind a wall that if a player steps on a pressure plate it just opens the wall and creepers can follow the player. That wouldn't be anything really cool. But what we can tell the player is they can run if they want to, okay? So our goal is to create a situation where player, despite the ability to clearly run away from them, is not able to do so. And that's why we have this pipe over here and we'll be using code AI to pause the game and then speed it up again. So what's up with invisible creepers? I think they don't exist. I think this is just a manifestation of lag and rubber banding on the server side. So what happens is if we have a lag spike or a situation where a server is struggling for a few seconds, then it accrues some time that it needs to make up for in the next ticks. So when the lag subsides, the game's trying to run as fast as it can just to get to the point where it should be. So from the client perspective, the game runs for a very brief moment really, really fast. But if you reverse it from the server perspective, it's the opposite for up to 15 seconds and that's important, players will be frozen. And this 15 seconds is more than enough for a creeper to find a player and blow it up. So players would have no chance. So why 15 seconds? It's because the game tries to check every 300 ticks if it lags for more than two seconds and if it is so it will actually lose those ticks so it won't be able to make up for them so if we aim to stretch the game somehow to speed it up later we cannot do it for more more than 15 seconds of the in-game time otherwise the game will start losing those ticks so that would be the invisible creeper part but to have this going we have to slow down the game somehow and we could do it in 1.13, 1.13.1 using the infamous caught AI problems. So up until 1.13.1 mobs were able to spawn in a kind of cylindrical chunk area around the player up to 8 chunks away. But most mobs, so all of them except the passive mobs that would spawn outside of 128 block sphere around the player would instantly despawn the next tick. So that is always the problem but it wasn't that big of a deal. Why? So we are here in the middle of the normal terrain, normal Minecraft terrain, and I have here a small utility called perimeter info that will tell me how many valid spawning spots are there around us, okay? So if you run it here in this village, we have not that many oceans around us. We can see that typically we have about 70, 75,000 spawning spaces in a typical player range, okay? But if, for example, add a specific mob to it, we can learn that Creeper, in this case, can only spawn in about 23,000 spawning spaces, which means that those mobs will have a really hard time spawning if you just consider those single tick. So, in this case, we have a situation where I have a player up in the skies and we have all this terrain outside of this 128 block sphere around the player area, but since right below them, mobs can still spawn in here. But we, since we had only 23,000 spawning spaces valid for spawning, it's not that big of a deal. And it's not harmful, it doesn't, it's, it looks ugly, uh, but it's not that bad as well. Now let's look at the oceans, okay? Think with the oceans, we have a lot of spawning spaces that are valid for to spawn any water mob, really. So if you run the same command, we can see that we have about 700,000 spawning spaces just for water mobs and only 20,000 for land mobs, so all the caves. So if you run a specific mob, in this case, for example, take a COD, COD can spawn in 650,000 blocks around here. So that's much more than Creeper. However, it was always the case like that because we always had squid. And if, for example, at squid, you can see that squid also has 600,000 spawning spaces. So what's the difference? 
There are two major differences between 112 and 113. First of all, in 112, mobs would only spawn in packs of 1 to 4 mobs, so 2.5 mobs on average. In the case of fish, they bumped it up for tropical fish up to 8 mobs per pack, which means that we'll be getting about 3 times the number of spawns in each individual tick. So that bumped up the issue, I mean, instead of having 80, let's say, squid flicking around like in 1.12, we have now about 300 mobs uh, showing up and despawning exactly in the same moment. So what's the problem with the CODS AI? Spawning happens close to the beginning of the tick and mobs are not being processed up until the end of it. So there's plenty of things that happen in between when these mobs are involved. So when this eventually happens, their AI is evaluated. So the first thing they do is they check if they have to despawn. And in this case, yes, because they're outside of the player range, so they will despawn, but they don't despawn immediately. They're just marked for removal at the end of the tick. So this executes, it just, it just marks them, but doesn't do anything. And then you have other types of AI that runs. The problem is with those AI tasks is some of them, let's look at one of them. This is wandering, have a bunch of checks to essentially prevent them from executing every single time. So it doesn't really matter if, for example, a squid would <laughs> run a particular piece of code here because it doesn't do too much. It quits really early. However, if we look at code, they have a specific task called follow group leader, where they form those groups of fish. And that's the first thing that they're going to execute. And the problem is in this case that they set up who is the leader of the group by looking at the, all the code that is around them at the first tick of their life, and then they're going to just follow them. Okay. So the problem is that these, these checks here are very expensive to do. And all this 300 code that spawns every tick and this spawns next tick they all do the same kind of checks on and on again. So that's why it seemed like the code AI was causing a problem, but what actually happened is finally the problem with mobs spawning and despawning rapidly surfaced because of this extra code that they need to run. So people were blaming code AI that's complex, but the problem was not the code AI, but this rapid mobs spawning and despawning, which was just a result of combining much bigger packs of mobs to spawn plus an extra code that they were running at their first tick of life. So fortunately and unfortunately the code AI issue will be fixed. I thought they'll fix it in 1.14 but they don't schedule those fixes to specific versions so they decided to push it a little bit earlier which is fine which means that this won't work in 1.13.2 but here what we are doing is player starts at around this location, which still includes a little bit of water within the 128 box range, which means that all the fish that is there just frolicking in the waters are preventing other cods from spawning. As soon as I get a little bit higher, this flickering starts to happen. We have a couple hundred, we can see 300 mobs flickering every single tick, including the cod and its AI, and this causes a massive lag on the server. And we can use that to slow down the game and then when we drop back again, so the moment we include a little bit of water in our range, those mobs will stay and the game will be able to resolve all of those ticks and run the game as fast as it can for a very short period of time. So now when you know how it works, our setup is actually very simple. Just have a simple tube, we put a player in. As we can observe, the problem is that our TPS drops down drastically. You can see the, the sticker here should take every second, but it's not doing it. It's like every two seconds. So the game is actually twice as slow as it should be. It picks up a little bit of those extra time. And as soon as we drop, blam, we have absolutely no chance to run out those creepers. So let's look at it from the third person perspective. Now there are special conditions, like there cannot be anybody else on the server, especially in the overworld. And if you have to, and if you want to observe it, we have to be in spectator mode. So that's an extra work. Or we could use some other methods of generating lag, doesn't matter, like redstone. So let's look from the third person perspective. We have some player, he's in survival. I'll just ask him to politely get into the tube. And as we can see, it looks like this player is moving a little slower because it's server side. So it is actually slower a little bit, but as soon as he drops, Kablam! Insta kill. So that's it, guys, for today. That's how I would kill Tango using invisible creepers and COD AI. 
Unfortunately, unfortunately and unfortunately this has been resolved in 113.2 so we can't do anything about it, at least the code part. If you did like it, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe if you're new, leave me a comment in the comment section below and see you in the next one. Bye bye! <laughs>